Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise King Jesus. Hi, guys. Uh, did you miss me? I've sure missed you guys. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I'm just coming up here and sharing what God laid on my heart to share with you. Uh, just a little bit of testimony of what this scripture means, because I certainly know like when I first met Jesus and um, I began to read the scripture, there was just so much revelation that I didn't understand yet. And that's fine because walking with Jesus and getting to know him more, getting to know his heart, getting to know his character. Uh, it takes time, you know, um, a relationship, you know, it takes time and it grows as we walk together in that relationship, just like a marriage, right? It grows as uh, we walk together day by day, hour by hour, year by year, month by month, decades by decades. And um, we get to know that person more and more. And uh, so, you know, the same is true with our relationship with Jesus and how uh, the more we get to know him, the more we start to conform like Christ. And the more we grow, the more we learn, the more the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. Right. And the more we will, um, the more we will uh, grow and mature and mature in uh, the word of God. And um so this is something he wanted me to share with you because when I became a new believer, uh, I was actually kind of scared of the scripture because I didn't, um, I wasn't mature in the revelation yet of uh, the understanding of the Father's heart and what he means by this. And so in the beginning, when I became born again and new in Christ, I was like, what? I, you know, I thought I had to like uh, just quit my job and sell everything I got and go live in the woods and and never have money. Like I thought it was wrong to have a job, you know, and to want to make money uh, and to have money. And so I thought I wasn't supposed to do any of that because I was serving mammon instead of money. And so in the beginning, I didn't know that. And um, a great uh, uh, pastoral leader, I call him a pastor because he's such a great a uh, man of God. And, uh, you know, he's pastored me a lot through, through the years and his name is Robert Jones and his, um, uh, his, his, uh, videos you can find on YouTube called Kai 1000, C-A-I 1000, uh, Revelation Rivers. And he's just flowing in abundance of revelation. He's just an amazing man of God. And he's really thorough with the word. He's really, you know, mature and mature. And he just has tons of revelations through the Holy Spirit, through the word. And he expounds on it and he teaches us and it helps us to grow. And I remember in the beginning, I was scared and I took it to him as him being one of my mentors and leaders. And I took it to him because I lacked understanding in it. And I thought, oh my gosh, am I supposed to quit my job? So anyway, um, something recently happened in my life to where Jesus wanted me to share this testimony with you. And it has everything to do with that scripture and understanding what he means by it. And um, so, you know, the title of my message, or the title of my video today is going to be called You Can't Serve Mammon and God. And um, what happened recently is this is what God means by this. You know, we have a choice where Jesus says, you know, pick up your cross and follow me, right? We have a choice to follow the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit and what he's saying to us. Or we have a choice to go and do our own thing and what we think is better, what we think we know is better. And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Yeah, he's full of justice. Yes, he is a God of justice, but he is a gentleman and he will allow us to walk the path that we choose to walk. And um, so we have a choice every day to lean on and yield to the Holy Spirit and his guidance and trust God, even when it doesn't make sense. Trust God that he knows what's best for us. And that includes our finances. And so recently what had happened is a few weeks back, I, I you know, I've been working this uh, job. I'm a cleaning lady. Praise God. Uh, I've been working this job. It's been amazing. It's been an amazing company I work for. But recently, a few weeks back through the ministry I'm a part of, I'm a part of Kentucky Jail Ministries, where we go in to the prisoners and we preach the gospel and we bring the love of Christ. And um, I got a job offer through them through one of his daughters that's also uh, in the business of cleaning and she was expanding and she needed uh, she needed help. She needs help. She needs more workers. And the, what happened was, is I was really, you know, thinking about 
taking this job because the job itself financial wise is like three, four times more lucrative than the job that I have now. And so um, I prayed about it and it was uh, in my heart. I thought, wow, what a great door that God's opening. What a great opportunity. Uh, You know, I could be financially set, more lucrative, make more money. And so to my surprise, you know, um, when I seeked God about it, uh, you know, he actually uh, steered me in a different direction and he wanted me to stay where I'm at because he said he had a plan for me. Now, see guys, in that moment, I had a choice, right? We all, you and I, we all have a choice. In that moment, I could have served mammon. I could have served money. I could have chose to be like, well, you know what, God, this is more lucrative. This makes more sense. This fits together more. Um, this is three times the amount of money than what I'm making now. So it's probably better for me. Or I could have, you know, uh, and I could have certainly chose that. Or I could have humbled myself, walked by faith and not by sight, right? Because seeing the money is walking by sight, not by faith. And I could have chose to serve wealth. I could have chose to serve mammon over what God had for me. So God wanted me to continue to stay at the job that I had because he said he had a plan for me. And see, I could have chose the the money being the better plan for me, or I could choose what God's plan is for me that is better for me. So I had a choice in that moment. And for me, I chose to obey. And I'm so thankful that I obeyed the Lord because it's been in many, many ways for his kingdom. It's been way more rich, way more lucrative, way more of the wealth transfer than me just getting the paycheck, me just getting the financial check. So in the beginning, I was so confused about this, but he wanted me to share this with you guys to give you an example how we be, we can be led of the Holy Spirit and trust him and go by his guidance and go by what he's telling us to do versus serving mammon. Now, if I chose not to listen to the Lord, right, I would have, I would have chosen mammon. And uh, so what I want to share with you is that testimony that God wanted me to share, because it's, it's an example of how we can serve the Lord or serve mammon. It's not about you're not allowed to have money. It's not about you're not allowed to have a job and that you have to quit everything and go live in the woods somewhere off grid and, and, and you know, eat, eat plants. <laughs> what it is, is do we trust God? Do we build our foundation on the Lord or do we build the foundation, you know, on the money? And uh, so this is a perfect example of what God means that you cannot serve him and mammon. And so we're going to go into uh, some scriptures he wants me to share. And we're going to go into Matthew 19 verses 20 to 22. And it's about the rich young ruler. And I'm going to read it to you. It says here, the young man said to him, all these things I have kept. Why am I, what am I still lacking? So this young ruler came up to Jesus and uh, asked Jesus, hey, I've kept all the law. I've kept all these commandments that you've had. And, uh, but what am I lacking? And uh, Jesus said to him, if you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. So in that choice of the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I had a choice to follow him or follow the money that paid three times the amount, right? Well, this is what uh, Jesus is saying to this rich young ruler. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieving for he was the one who owned much property. So what Jesus was saying is it wasn't wrong. I don't know why this is here. Let me go around like this. That was weird. So what Jesus was saying is it wasn't wrong for the, the rich young ruler to have right? These things, what it was is these things had him. So he, the rich young ruler couldn't part ways with these things because those is what he was building his life foundation on. He wasn't building it on Jesus. And uh, you can also find this in uh, Matthew, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Mark 10 and Luke 18. See, and I love this. I love out of three out of the four gospels, it states about the young ruler. Why? Because we know three represents divine wholeness, completeness, perfection, fulfillment, and harmony. So our money, guys, is not what brings divine wholeness, completeness, perfection, fulfillment, and harmony, right? It's Jesus Christ. So I just thought that that was neat that three out of the four gospels, three shared it. 
So that was pretty amazing. I want to share that. Then he wants me to go to uh, Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27, okay? And that is... It, and the title's called The Two Foundations. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell. And great was its fall. We see this through Hollywood. Unfortunately, we see this through billionaires, Hollywood, celebrities, elites. They have all the money in the world, the riches, the fame, the women, whatever, men. They have it all, but they have the billions. And yet, they're still empty. They're still lost. They're still depressed. They still commit suicide. Why? Because Jesus is saying in this parable right here, if you build your foundation on money, you're building it on sand. You're not building it on the rock of Jesus Christ. And when that happens... Great will be your fall, right? Money comes, money goes. I mean, who knows? The you know, economy could collapse one day. Then what are you going to do? You know, uh, you could take that job like I could, and it could run you in the ground. It could steal your health, right? It could steal your peace, your joy. And see, and, and it says the sand will come along, and when that foundation, when that happens, your foundation, the sand will sink it. Hallelujah. So this is why we yield to the Holy Spirit, and we trust Him. Amen. So he wanted me to share that with you. And it's also in Luke 6. And we're going to go to Luke 6, 841. I got my notes here. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my word and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has but the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation and the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed and the ruin of that house was great hallelujah so this is what Jesus was wanting me to teach you and show you guys just in my personal testimony and, and you know what, what went on with me when it came to money I, I had two choices serve him follow him right? Or serve the mammon and go my own way and do it my own way. And I love this because the title of this in my NASB I'm using, the title is it, the title of it is the two foundations, right? Which also lines up. I love it because it's in Matthew uh, 624. It corresponds with it. And in Matthew 624, it says this. It says, I love it. It lines up with it, guys. Um, well, I can't find, let's see. I'm sorry. I'm still in Luke. Hold on. Matthew 6, 24. It corresponds with this. Uh, Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So I had a choice to serve God and what he asked me to do on my job picking or serve the wealth. Amen. And I love that because the title in Matthew 7, 24, it says the, uh, it says the two foundations and it lines up with Matthew 6, 24 in that passage. I love it. And then he wants me to go to Matthew chapter seven, verses nine. Then I'm going to read that to you. Matthew chapter seven, verses nine through 11. Here we go. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asked for a loaf, will give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? So see, God knows my needs. God knows your needs. He knows that we have bills to pay. He knows that it takes money to, to have food in our bellies and the clothes on our back. And he will provide it. He's saying if we're evil, know how to give our children good gifts, He's not going to give us a snake when we ask for a piece of bread, right? And we also see that in Luke 11. We see this in Luke 11. I'm going to read that quickly to you. It says, Now suppose one of you fathers 
Now suppose one of you fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So see, we have, he gives us the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift in the world. He gives us the Holy Spirit so he can lead us and guide us daily as we pick up our cross and follow him. And he leads and guides us into the all truths because he is for us and not against us. Amen. So I just wanted to do that little teaching and to help those who are new in the faith or lack the understanding of what it means, what God truly means about, hey, you can't serve two masters is like you can't serve me and wealth. You can't serve me and money. Like the rich young ruler, he was serving his wealth instead of truly wanting to serve God. Amen. But know in this, God is a good God. He is a good provider and he will provide. See, God is providing for me now, even I'm making three times less than what I could have been making. But the riches and glory in Christ far outweigh the paycheck that I get. So what I did was I chose to obey. I chose not to serve mammon over God. Amen. So I hope this gave some clarity to you all. I hope this broke it down for you to understand this more, what God really means by this. We have a choice in our decisions every day in life to yield and listen to what God is saying to do or to go and do our own thing. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, I'm loving what God has for me versus my paycheck. It far outweighs any amount of money that I could have got off of this new job. So I, I pray this blesses you all. I pray this helps you all to understand. Just go where God tells you to go. Serve where God tells you to serve. Work a job where God asks you to work. Right? And in that, when you do that, you're building your foundation solid on the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus bless you. I love you all. We'll speak soon. Bye.